We have big renovation plans for this house, but while we wait to start on that, we need to modernise the existing bathroom quickly and cheaply, keeping in mind that it might not even stay when we do the bigger renovation. The bathroom originally had a shower, sink, bidet, toilet, and very large bathtub and they were all in this greenish color. The floor of the bathroom was green carpet tiles, which were definitely not ideal. The size of this bathroom is actually fairly reasonable. It's 2.5 by 3.2 meters. Because the room is built into the eaves, the ceiling height is compromised. And so while the floor space is quite good, the space that has a full head height is actually very limited. And that has really limited us in the design for this bathroom. So once I roughly knew where each thing had to go, I needed to decide on the colors and I didn't really know what I wanted. So I went on Home Styler and I did a design of the space. I tried a lot of different designs. I played with every color you could think of just because why not, you know, to redo a bathroom costs so much money, but to redo it on Homestyle, it costs nothing. I just tried all sorts of colors, even ridiculous colors, just to see for the fun of it, really. I realized that I really like dark floors in bathrooms. I don't know if it's because it makes the floor seem like it's lowering, and especially with the strange ceiling in this room, that made it feel better, I don't know, but I just decided that I definitely wanted dark floors, but I was pretty flexible on the walls. In the end, the wall tile that we went for. I'm pretty sure that our builder literally just went to the tile shop that morning and told us that these were the cheapest ones there that day that they had enough of. So that's what we picked. Get something cheap and easy. We knew we had to retile the areas where the shower was, of course. And so then we naturally did that across that wall and then across to the door. But we didn't want to waste money retiling the entire bathroom because we didn't need to retile that. There was nothing wrong with those tiles. They were just dated. So what we did was paint the remaining tiles white and if you look closely you can tell and it's a bit weird but at a distance you can't tell and it's fine and it's fresh and it's definitely better than if we didn't paint them white. That was a good budget choice that we made. So the flooring that we used is actually, I think, LVT, and it's some black color. It's fine. It was also something that was just a cheaper option. The shower, I'm happy with overall. I would have preferred that it didn't have a door, and I'd also prefer if it had been a bit bigger because I think the space is there for it to be a bit longer. But it is what it is. It was the easiest thing that we could get together. The shower tray is a black low-profile tray. It is 1,200 by 800. I chose chose to get this black shower tray because it was easier to get black shower tray and then black tiles and sort of create the illusion of a bit of a wet room look even though it is just a shower tray. So it was a little bit more expensive but it was just a choice to make it feel a little bit nicer. Our intention is that we will reuse these fixtures in our renovation so even if they get ripped out of this bathroom and this space becomes something different we'll be able to reuse the components of this room. However, However, I don't think we'll reuse the shower. I don't actually think I'll ever get black fixtures ever again because we have hard water and it just gets lime scale on it so quickly and it's difficult to clean. You can't use vinegar or any corrosive things on it because it literally wears away the black on it. It looks good when you first get it, but I just don't like it. The other decision that I have learned from the shower is I previously never knew if I prefer squared shapes or round shapes in bathroom fittings and now I definitely have decided I prefer round shapes because the water collects on the flat area of the mixer and that creates lime scale even more. So I prefer round because then the water will come off that naturally. And even if there wasn't lime scale, it's just better that the water's not sitting there. So that's something I've really finalized and I think that in bathroom bathrooms in the future, I'm just always going to go for stainless steel, round fittings, keep it moving because I just want what's practical. The bathtub is 1300 by 600, which is smaller than normal. I tried to find the smallest possible bathtub I could find. We made the choice that we'd rather have a small bath rather than no bath.
we put the bathtub at an angle to just help with the head height issue. And it's actually quite fine to get in and out of, surprisingly. I'd prefer that we had a full head height, but working with what we had, it works fine. It gets the job done. The sink was a bit of a journey. I don't like dedicated bathroom cabinetry. It's usually quite ugly, quite basic, and very expensive. I just couldn't justify spending a whole lot of money on something that I thought was just basic. I decided that I wanted to have something that looked a bit more freestanding and then just put a sink onto it because all you need to do is cut a hole in it. And I found some beautiful things online that I really like, but I couldn't justify getting something and drilling a hole in a beautiful piece of furniture that even if we could reuse it, we might not necessarily be able to have that same layout. Maybe we would reuse it in another bathroom but need the sink on the right instead of the left or something like that. And I didn't want to get into that situation. So I decided to just find something really cheap and really flexible that I don't have to worry about that's not some kind of precious wood that I feel bad about drilling a hole into. I got this cabinet and it was really cheap and I think it looks good. I intended on sealing it and staining it but because I was pregnant I was too scared to use things like that and breathe in the chemicals so I never did and it just looks fine. So maybe one day I might get around to it but it's still fine. Our mirror where the mirror is placed is where the shower used to be and the old vanity unit. There was a lot stuck to the wall on top of those tiles. So when all of that stuff got ripped down, that wall was very ugly. It needed a lot of patching. It would have been quite a debacle to fix it all. And it wasn't worth it because once again, this is temporary. So I knew I wanted a mirror here and I knew I wanted a mirror that was as big as possible. So I used it as an excuse to get a full mirror across the whole space. But it wasn't that simple because of the angle of the roof. Luckily I found this website that literally designs any kind of shape of mirror and you can get perspex and all sorts of stuff. It was really easy to do. It told you which measurements to do and then it added the diagonal measurement I think probably. And considering that's a custom mirror in an unconventional shape and it's this big, I thought that that was such a good price and it, it would have cost so much more and been so much more work and taken so much more time to fill all the holes and deal with the patching that needed to be done in that space. So it really solved a problem and makes the room look more spacious. I love mirrors, especially in bathrooms. So I'm really happy with that. And I'm glad I know about that website because I will definitely use that in the future. We do have this little ledge along the side behind the bathtub. That's where we put the radiator because I hate radiators. I think they're so ugly. I just hate them. So I've tucked it behind the bathtub where I don't have to look at it and it's not taking up wall space and interrupting my life. I hate them so much. So that's where the radiator is. The other thing that we had to do was build this step up area to the wet area of the bathroom. And that's because we moved the plumbing. It was just way easier to just build a platform, put all the plumbing underneath that. So that's what we did. It actually kind of differentiates the space a bit and I, I quite like it. That's something that was a bit unexpected. So in this room, I wanted to have lots of lights because I love lights. So we have six down lights in here. Previously, we only had two. But what I didn't think through is that they're not on a dimmer. And so now that we have six lights, it's like a shopping center. It's so bright in here at night that it's too aggressive. So I have purchased this sensor light really cheaply. And that is just battery operated in the middle of the night when we come in here, that turns on. We don't have to turn on this extremely bright light. It's so bright that I think I might actually remove some of the bulbs because it's just too full on. So things that I have learned from this process, I definitely won't use black fittings again. I can't be bothered with how difficult it is and what a pain it is. And I need my bathroom to work for me. So I'm gonna go back to doing chrome things in the future. I've learned about the mirror company that I will definitely be using again. I've learned that even though this unit that we're using for the vanity isn't the best thing in the world, it's better than dedicated bathroom cabinets and far cheaper. So I've learned about that. I've also learned about the lights that I definitely want to have them on dimmers. I'll do that in the future for sure. Overall, I'm really happy with it. I'm happy with how it turned out. This bathroom still isn't perfect, but for what we started with, for what we needed to achieve and our limitations, I think it's absolutely fine. And it's obviously a massive upgrade from what we had before. I feel really clean when I get out of the shower now, which is what you want. I thought I'd leave you with this reminder of where we started and a few before and after images to show the full scope of what we have done.